What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Steel Roots. We're having a good time on the show today. We've got an awesome lineup. But before I break that down and get into who's going to be right here, I want to remind you, check out the website, steelroots.com. Check out photos, videos, send us an email. And hey, if you've got a prayer need in your life, log on, send us your prayer request. We want to be praying for you, steelroots.com. But now, today on the show, we've got Kelly Clark, Halfpipe Champion, Don't Touch the Dial. We're going to have her on the show. We've also got Vagabond 12 from Greenville, South Carolina. Dude, today's show is going to be good times because we've got not only good guests, we've got a good cannon. I like to shoot things. we got a cannon out back. Today on the show, we're talking about fellowship and accountability. It's important that we fellowship with other believers and that we have people that keep us accountable, help check us up. So don't miss this show. We're going to be breaking open the word. Good times, like always, right here on Steel Roots. And hey, it's dynamite time. So sit back. Here's a little dynamite action. Here we are again in Steel Roots at another undisclosed location out here. We're getting crazy. We're blowing stuff up because that's what I've always wanted to do. Growing up, I've always tried to blow up mailboxes, but you know these M80s they sell you nowadays? They don't got what it takes. They can maybe knock the door off if, if you're lucky, but dude, I want to see it get gone. Don't try this at home. We got trained professionals having a good time here, and we're going to see what we can do to this mailbox. I think we're going to take care of it, and I'd also like to take care of all these letters and emails and everything that I get about everybody just bagging on us all the time. You know what? I don't really care about that because uh, we're getting kids saved. We're doing things right, so if you got a problem, take it somewhere else, but right now we're going to send this stuff airmail, steel root style, right here on the show. Check it out. All right, it's detonation time, and just a reminder, don't try this at home. I know all you guys, are, you're going to be trying to make little bombs and stuff, but, dude, it's not cool. you got to obey the laws of the land just like we're doing here. So live through us, and we're going to get ready to take care of this mailbox right here in Steel Root. So I'm going to pass it off to Ray. Hit it, Ray. Three, two, one. Woo. Yeah. Nice. That's the way we've always wanted to do it. I've only got the door to come off, but uh, Ray took care of business. There's the door. No more mailbox. As you can see, there's all the hate mail from Steel Roots, and uh, it's uh, gone over there. Bye-bye. Along with the mailbox, that's what I've always wanted to do is get rid of it. And uh, that's what we did today. No doors. No, the whole mailbox is gone. Steel Root style. Getting crazy. So don't play with dynamite. We're going to head back in the studio. Woo! Yeah. Nice. Kaboom! That's it. Another explosion right here on Steel Roots. Dude, where else can you just turn on the TV and see stuff blown up? I love it. It never gets old. And we got phones ringing in the studio because it's getting off the hook, blowing stuff up. Kelly Clark's on the show, Vagabond 12, a cannon, and I'm taking a break. Peace. Hey, welcome back to Steel Roots. On the show today, we've got gold medalist Kelly Clark, half pipe extraordinaire, in here all the way from out in Mammoth Lakes, California. She's traveling all over, and we hooked up with her. We got a little bit of footage right now of her in action, so sit back and relax. Check this out.
There she was, Kelly Clark in action, and now we've got her right here on the Steel Root set. How you doing, Kelly? Good, how you doing? Good, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. All right, so man, you've been out there traveling all over, busy, and what's going on in your life right now? Uh, just finishing up snowboard season and yeah. uh, kind of getting ready for summer, I guess. A little bit of a break for me. Awesome. So you're busy out there in the contest circuit, and that's that's no joke. It keeps you hopping on the road. And what's what's something you just love about snowboarding? What keeps you going day after day? Uh, snowboarding's just amazing. You know, I loved it since I was a little kid, yeah. and um, it's just kind of a little bit freeing to some extent. It kind of takes my mind off a lot of things. Yeah. You know, and I can uh, just kind of be myself and not have to worry about all the other things in the world that I can just snowboard and have fun. Yeah, right on. So what was it that brought you to the Lord? I mean, you had a good career going and you still have an awesome career going, but what was it that finally said, you know what, this is, there's got to be something more? Well, once you make it to the top, it's, um, there's not a whole lot else to go but down once you find out that it's not what you were looking for. Yeah. So um, that's kind of where it started. And I was at a contest and um, I came down to the bottom of the pipe and I mean, snowboarding was just going well still, it was yeah. going great, you know? But I was just so broken and depressed inside. And um, yeah. someone came down and was crying and was really upset because they, um, they fell both their runs, you know? And someone else was like, hey, it's all right, God still loves you. Yeah. And I'm all, what? I'm like, that's a concept? You know, I'd heard people tell me that Jesus loves me. I heard them tell me that he's a God of love, you know? But God had to get me to a place where I could see him, yeah. you know? And what he had for me. Awesome. And um, I was able to talk to these people, you know? And they were able to clear up a whole lot of misconceptions that I had about yeah. what it meant to be a Christian, you know. I thought it was being being good all the time, you know, yeah. and following a set of rules and yeah. and um, going to church and all that, you know. But I found out that Jesus had a relationship waiting for me and that yeah. he loved me. Nice. And, uh, and over the next four months or so after that, you know, I, uh, he surrounded me with people to answer my questions yeah. and, um, and just let me learn about him, you know. And, uh, and it was just pretty awesome that I got to to know him for his love and, yeah. and, and see what he had for me, you know, what he has for us all. Right on. You got any pre-thoughts here before you fire it? I hope I don't die. You ready? Yeah. Woo! All right, we got a cannon out here. You ready for this cannon? Oh yeah. <laughs> nice. All right, we got the guys from Vagabond 12. Are you guys ready for the cannon? Ready. We're ready. Woo! Do you know what you're getting into coming on this show? No. No, no, no not at all. How about you? Nope. <laughs> so any pre-shot thoughts? No. <laughs> I'm <All> excited. Right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> all right. How'd you like that? That was so awesome. Nice. It's going to get crazy, just getting warmed up, fired up, and uh, blown up. You can get all that good stuff right here at Steel Roots. You got any pre-thoughts here before you fire it? I hope I don't die. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Woo! Yeah, awesome. how was that? That is the coolest thing since, like, sliced bread, man. That yeah. is so cool. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, man. <laughs> All right. Old paper, rock, scissors. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. How was that? That was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. I think uh, fellowship and accountability are very important, um, especially for young Christians and new Christians. It helps them to grow spiritually and uh, also, uh, you know, kind of just like develop their gifts and find out who they are in Christ. Uh, like community? Is that what you're kind of asking, I guess? Um, I think without community, you don't really have a full expression of faith. Um, I think that the church is community in its most basic form, and I think that accountability kind of comes in as a byproduct. Well, that was what some people had to say when we went out and asked them, what do you think about fellowship and accountability? And, I mean, you guys are in a band. You're out there on the road hitting the contest circuit. And fellowship and accountability, I mean, that, that's huge in our walk with the Lord. What do you guys think about it? How important is it? 
I think it's huge, man. <clears throat> I think you have to be accountable to, you know, God, obviously, but you have to right. be accountable to your brothers and sisters in Christ, man. Keeps you, it, it's able to keep you more in line. Yeah. You know, of course, fellowship, I mean, that's what we do. You know, yeah. in, a band, in a band situation, we're always fellowshipping and, yeah. and enjoying it. And, and sometimes I think if you, if you it, when you're in the business of it, yeah. you know, um, you kind of get, you lose sight of that sometimes. But um, it's always, for, for me, it's always key to get back to that fellowship and that accountability with your, yeah. with your brothers in Christ. I know. For me, fellowship's really big. Um, how important it is for, for believers, like believers, to be together and to experience um, worship and kind of recharge your spiritual battery yeah. to go out there in the world and, and um, let, let, let the young church know what they're missing, let the, yeah. the non-Christians know what they're mission, missing. So fellowship is, is a really big part of, of, of our walk yeah. uh, as any Christian, right I on. believe. Well, how about you, Kelly? I mean, you're out there in the contest circuit and you know you're busy, you're going from interview, then it's time to go ride and practice. How is it trying to find some people to, to be accountable to and to fellowship with? Yeah, it's not always easy, um, you know, being on the road so much, finding people to share God with and, and just share what He's doing in your life yeah. and bring up each other and encourage each other. You know, it's so important too, and yeah. it's and it's uh, it's even more difficult. You know, you're not you're not in your um, comfort zone of yeah. your of your church where you can um, you know you can go there and you can find that support all the time. Yeah. Um, but I found just through traveling that God um, is full of provision. Yeah. You know, more so than you ever would would have hoped or asked, and. Um, I found, you know, anywhere I go, just when I think I'm at the most struggling point, he'll provide someone to pray with. He'll provide yeah. someone to, to encourage me and speak through. And yeah. um, he's just amazingly faithful in that sense. It's just so important. Awesome. Well, what do you guys think? Do you think it's like hard sometimes for us to just be actually honest with someone and say, you know what, right now I need to call somebody. Or if, if you don't have anyone around or just to go to your brother and say, you know what, dude, I'm, I'm having a hard time. I'm struggling right here. Do you, you guys think that's something that's easy to do or? Well, I guess it just depends on where you're, you know, the situation you're in. Like yeah. she was just saying, it might be a little bit more difficult when she's out by herself, you know, snowboarding and stuff. Yeah. For us, you know, it's a little bit maybe easier because we've always got several people yeah. around us. So, I, you know, I, for me, it's fairly easy to do that, you know. Yeah. But I think you have to have good people, like, you know, around you. And, yeah. you know, we're blessed that way, so surround ourselves with good Christian people and, and I think that makes a big difference. Yeah. You know. Even when we're apart, you know, we uh you know, we're we're brothers um in Christ, but we're brothers, man, we're just we're best friends and, and we all work away from each other during the day. So it's not uncommon to call each other up and say, Man, I just I just need to talk to you. I need we just need to pray. We just need to pray about yeah. what's going on or, you know, pray for this guy at work, um, you know, help me be a witness and and uh you know, we do that. So luckily, you know, we have the, our fellow bandmates to kind of hold each other like accountability partners and yeah. and just just to lift us up you know what do you guys think about you know you're on the outside and you've got one of your friends around and you see him kind of slip in doing some stuff and and we're not supposed to judge each other but also at the same time the bible says that if that's our brother we need to help him out and do you think that's hard sometimes to open our mouth and do it in a nice way because we we love them and that's why we're checking them. It's definitely hard. You don't you know, especially when you see them when you see them slipping and um, you really you really pray for God to give you the words because you just can't come up with them. Yeah. You don't want to you don't want to scare them off or come like or come at them like you're being condescending because um, I know I felt that way in the past yeah. um, before I was saved that you know hey you're not doing you're not doing what you need to be doing. And then I, I, I put up a guard, you know, don't condescend me, don't, yeah. you know, don't act like you're better than me. So that's my, you know, I've been on the other end of it, so I try to stay mindful that, you know, if, if you're going to witness to somebody and you're going to try to pull them up, it's just a really delicate situation. Yeah, Yeah, I think the most important thing is just to come at them in love. Yeah. I mean, that's what Jesus does. Yeah. yeah. Did. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just so key to come at them in love. Yeah. And, um just ask the Lord to give you the words because uh, that love isn't always found in us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's true. All right on. Well, you know, it's it's not always easy. I mean, out there, it takes effort for on your part to find someone to be accountable to. And um, a lot of times we got people going to church and they get comfortable there, but, you know, they really don't have anyone that they can come to and confide in and say, you know what, here's my weaknesses. And it's important that we do come to our friends and say, you know what, here's where I struggle, so I, I need you to watch me, I need you to check me, and I need you to ask me about these things. 
And uh, if I do them, man, check me up and call me out. And um, you I guys think, find that kind of hard? I think it's the that's the beauty of being a Christian, though. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the beauties, I guess I should say, because you have that, you know, when you have that ability to go to your brothers or sisters and say, hey, you know, I yeah. need to. You know, I need to surround myself with people, and they're and they're there for you. Yeah. I mean, that for me is huge. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I mean, let's talk. I mean, kind of fellowship falls into we're all part of a body. It's not just we're not a lone ranger out there trying to do it alone. And you know, we all fulfill different parts of the role. And I mean, you're out there in the snowboard scene. You guys are out there in the music scene, um, trying to make a difference for Christ and and uh, uh, to be a witness out there. So. Kind of what's an example of you guys have from being out on the road and um, helping each other out? Hmm. Putting you right on the spot. Here. You are. <laughs> you are. <laughs> you are. Um, I need to put him on the spot for not riding the bull. <laughs> yeah, you should. <laughs> I think I'm on it's the wall back. of fame over there. Yeah. yeah. It's what it is. <laughs> well, you know, um, music in general uh, has negative connotations. Yeah. Um, the music scene, the fact that we are Christian men and a Christian band sometimes thrown into the secular world yeah. is um, really hard so we've got to we've got to it's it's we've got to be more on top of our you know of ourselves in the secular world because we need people to look at us say yeah. hey they're out here they're having a good time but they're not you know doing the things yeah. that, that aren't that don't bring god glory and and yeah. and that's a big challenge for us but we i think we try to take that on as an outreach project yeah. you know um Try to reach the unreachable, yeah. and, and but they're more scrutinizing than anyone. Yeah. You know, so it's 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 a challenge. There's, I think there's simple ways of simple guidelines like we have done, like simply like we play. We might play at a secular venue, and somebody has come up and said, "I'd like to buy you guys a round of beers," and we're like, "We don't drink. We just yeah. drink water. You can get us some water," mm -hmm. and that has in and of itself been a witness to people. So we, you know, I think if you lay down guidelines for, you know, accountability. And, yeah. You know, I think that that helps us out a lot, you know. All right. Well, if you're out there watching today and you don't have anybody that you can fellowship with or be accountable to in your Christian walk, if you're a new Christian out there, I want to encourage you, get plugged into a church, get some friends around you that can help you out. We went back out on the street. We asked some more people what they thought about accountability and fellowship. Here's what they had to say. I believe family is everything and unity is everything. One of the greatest... Um, um, revivals ever in Hernhut, I believe, with the Moravians in Zinzendorf. It was all community and family. And it's not like they were looking for community, but they were looking, they all had their eyes bound for Jesus. Everything was on Jesus. Everything was looking at Jesus. But the community just came together, just perfect. And it was just unbelievable. The fellowship, the accountability to overcome things, to move forward. They always went from grace to grace and glory to glory. Accountability is important to keep you on track with the Lord. It helps someone who knows where you're trying to go. Um, keep you on that path to get there, you know, get closer with the Lord and fellowship keeps you lifted up, keeps you encouraged so that you are feeling like you can get there with the Lord. On the show today, we've been talking about fellowship and accountability. And it's important as Christians that we have people in our lives, friends, other brothers and sisters in Christ, people at church. We need to have people that we can be accountable to in our life. You know, our Christian walk, it's, it's not easy. It's a walk and it takes one step at a time. If you stop walking, your walk's going to stop. So get other people around you that you can fellowship with, that can help encourage you. If you're having a bad day, hey, they can pray with you, they can lift you up, they can help you keep going. And if you're struggling in your life, you need to be honest with them. And being honest with people, you know, it's not always the easiest thing. I know in my life, you know, I don't always want to tell people the deep, dark secrets and say, you know what, this is where I'm struggling. But it's important that if you have a hard time, if you've got something in your life you can't seem to get over, that you be honest with people and you say, you know what, here's where I'm struggling. I need you to watch me. I need you to check me up. I need you to keep me accountable because I want to live a holy life. And if that's you out there watching, you know what, you're not watching this show by accident. God put you in front of this TV for a reason. He wants you to get around other people that can help keep you accountable, that can pray with you. The Bible talks about it in Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter. It says that two are better than one, for they have a good reward for their labor. For if one falls down, the other one will help lift them back up and keep them going. We need to have friends that love us enough to check us, to say, you know what? I saw you slipping over here. Can I pray with you? Can I help you? If you don't have friends like that, I encourage you to go out, find some Christian brothers and sisters to help keep you accountable in your life. 
God doesn't want you to go through it alone. He doesn't want you to be a lone ranger out there. He set it up that way for a reason. Two people are stronger than one. The Bible says that if two of you on earth agree concerning anything they ask the Father in my name, it will be done for them. So agree with your brothers and sisters in prayer over the needs in your life. Keep that accountability chain going. And if you're watching this show today and you don't know Jesus Christ, well, you can meet him today before this show is over. God loves you and he has a special plan for your life. You're not supposed to go through it alone. God's got your back. He wants to be your best friend. And if you want to meet him today, just bow your head and ask him. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you're the son of God and I want you to be the Lord of my life today. Please forgive me for my sins and fill me right now with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. It's that simple. If you pray that prayer just now, your life will never be the same. The Lord just entered in. You've got a new friend. He's got your back. You're not alone. God loves you. Get into church. Have some brothers and sisters to be accountable to, to fellowship with. Start reading your Bible every day. It's important to get into God's word. See what his promises have to say to you. And you know what? You need to spend time praying. Build a relationship with Christ. You've got to build that friendship. It doesn't just magically happen. And it's not always going to be easy, but God promises you something. He'll always be there for you. He's got your back. He'll never leave you or forsake you. So don't ever forget that. And if you have a prayer need in your life, log on to our website, steelroots.com. We want to pray for you. We want to believe together with you that God will answer the needs in your life. So you guys, we'll see you again right here on Steel Roots. And remember, with God, all things are possible. Thank <laughs> you.